Welcome back folks and in this scene we're going to take a look at trying to add a little bit more detail into our rock wall. We looked at adding displacements to break up our rock surface value in the previous scene but we weren't quite getting enough detail in coming into the rocks. So what I'd like to look in this scene is trying to add a little bit more detail using a texture deformer and our normal map and that will get us a bit more detail again into the rocks down here. And then I would like to take a look at adding a little bit more surface variety to these various different surfaces up here. So previously we looked at doing some displacement in the viewport and that was quite handy to get our displacement started. But I'm going to go and turn that off now. So in the end you'll really need to go and render in Arnold to get a good idea of what's happening with displacement. I'm going to turn this off for now and I'm actually going to turn off textures overall. And we can just look at the actual mesh itself. So what I'd like to do is push the points of the model out with a map. And the way that we can do that in Maya is with a texture deformer. So to get some detailing, there is a direct relationship between the amount of detail in our textures and the amount of verts in our model. And the issue that we have with this model, if we go and take a look at our UV editor, is that this particular area here has a good bit of detail, but does not have a huge amount of the texture space to work with. So we're going to need quite a few polygons to play around with to get this texture deformer to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth this area here, and that's going to start subdividing this mesh for me. Okay, now I'm going to put this up to two just for now. That's going to give me quite a few polygons. And then I'm going to go to deform and I'm going to come down to the texture deformer down here. And the texture deformer needs a texture and I'm going to use the normal map in this case. And I'm going to go and load in my normal map. And here's my normal map right in here. And that's going to start pushing my points around. Now the problem is it's pushing it straight up and that's because the default is to use a deformer handle, which just gives you a direction really, in this case. So it's pointed straight up and all the points are being pushed up and that's not what I want. I want to use normal. So now it's going to try and push out along the polygon normals. It's going to use this normal map to do it. Let's pull down the strength of this quite a lot, I think. And you can see that we're starting to get some more detail coming in. So we're starting to pick up some detail from the normal map. I'm just going to try and add a few more polygons. Yeah, now we're starting to pick up a good bit more detail now. So the reason we need so many polygons in this case is, like I mentioned, we aren't using a lot of texture space. Ideally, what we do is we would stretch the UVs for this particular object in the texture space and generate the texture maps with a bit more detail into those UVs. And doing that would cut down on the amount of polys that we have to use but we are starting to pick up some more detail in here now this detail along with our kind of fake displacement map and the extra little bit of frequency noise should start to give us kind of some interesting surface values arnold does handle a lot of polygons quite well this will increase our render time but arnold does handle lots and lots of geo quite well so let's take a quick render of this particular area this is what we had before we used our deformer and this is what we get after our deformer. So it's starting to push it out a little bit more. We're going to need to balance all these things off. If you push the displacement too far, everything starts to become a little bit chunky and looks a little bit inflated or a little bit fat. And also you'll start to get lots of interpenetration when the points start to go through each other. So we're going to need to balance all of those things off. Now, that takes a little bit of time to tweak all of those values. So I'm not going to go through all of those steps. I need to pull down the texture deformer a little bit and pull that into the displacement just a little bit as well and then push back up the normal map to balance all of those things out. Now that's this area here starting to be dealt with. I need to start looking at the other areas. Now the next step I need to go through is to go and balance up all the other shaders. And I duplicated the original shader out a few times and applied it to everything else. So I need to go and balance all those up. There won't be quite as much work in balancing out the rest of the shaders as there was in this area down here. So I'm not going to go through each shader step by step. 
Uh, I'm going to go off now and balance up all of those shaders and I'll come back to you when they've all been balanced out a little bit and we can and we can quickly touch on some of the steps that I went through. Uh, so we're back and I have gone through and adjusted the shaders for each part of the well. So I moved from something like this to something like this. So I balanced up the displacement because I had used the texture deformer to push out these shapes. So I softened everything off there. Brought back in the normal map just a little bit on this area. And then I moved the lights around just a little bit to try and pick up some of the highlights. So I moved the lights to be higher up and angled down about 45 degrees. I increased the strength of the area light on this side to try and pick up a little bit of rim lighting to pick up some of the higher frequency detailing in and around here. Onto these vertical and horizontal beams, I added a little bit of a displacement map with some noise in one direction to get a little bit of grain going on the wood uh, going up vertically. And then I just duplicated that and changed the direction so it was going across horizontally. I moved this handle just to break the silhouette a little bit more, just to create a little bit more visual interest. And I softened the edge loops on the corners just here. So I'm not going to go through all of the shader tweaks that I did. As you would expect for some look dev, there was quite a bit of tweaking to get it to exactly where I would want. But I am going to just touch very briefly on what I did for this vertical piece of wood here. I adjusted the model to soften off the edges so I get a little bit more of a beveled edge. And that makes it feel like a bit more of a softer material than the rock down here, where I kept the edge just a little bit sharper. On the material itself, I did similar to the rock down below. I added some displacement to it to give a little bit of visual interest. In this case, I used an AI cell noise. And what I did was I created a lot of noise running in one direction. And I did that by using the scale value here. So I scaled it up. In fact, I scaled it up to about 200 by 200. And if I wanted to take a look at that cell noise just here on its own, I can always solo it. And I'll give you an idea. I had these streaks running through it. So it can be a little bit difficult to see until you start to pump it into the displacement. Then you start to pick it up a little bit more. But I did use the soloing feature to get an idea of what was going on. And then you can start to see it getting picked up here. It's these black streaks running up along this way. I did a similar thing to the horizontal wood, except I was scaling it in the Y. And that gets me these kind of nice little uh, highlights running along it. The other thing I did that might be of interest in this particular shader was I added the ambient occlusion back in. So in this particular map here, we have occlusion, roughness and metallic. And the roughness and metallic are driving the metallic and specular roughness just over here. The ambient occlusion, which is in the R channel, what I did with that is I multiplied it by the base color. Now the base color is a vector three. It is, it's got an R, G and a B value in it. And the ambient occlusion is stored in just the R channel over here. So it's a float. Essentially it's got one value in it. And this one over here has three values in it. So to be able to effectively multiply one by the other, which is what I want to do, uh, I need to turn this float value here into three numbers. And what I did was I took the OR channel and I put it into a float to RGBA and I plugged the OR into RG and B. So they're exactly the same. It just takes this singular number here and turns it into three numbers, which is what I need when I go to multiply it by the color. So that's all that I did there. And I just used an AI multiply, plug the base color into one side and the ambient occlusion into the other, and then plug that directly into the base color. And what that got me was some soft shadowing just around here and here, and a little bit of soft shadowing just here as well. And that's really all that was different in terms of these wood shaders. So here's the original EXR and here is the current version. And we can see that the wood doesn't feel quite as sharp anymore. So it's been softened off, catching just some highlights along the edges, which is quite nice. The beams here were a little bit flat before and they have a little bit more detailing now. And then we've got some displacement, which is picking up some of the finer detail just across there. 
the handle is breaking the silhouette just across there i haven't really dealt a huge amount with these areas in here but we're getting some more detailing happening across the rocks they were feeling a little bit flat before a little bit painted on and now we've got some more detail running across there and a little bit more detail running around these areas here as well and it does take a little bit of time to go through and make all of these subtle changes but you can start to see that all of these subtle changes over time start to have a fairly large impact on the look of the model now keep in mind this is just one still frame as the model starts to move around we'll start to pick up all these little details in terms of the highlights and the way that the highlights look the last thing i would take a look at doing is changing the focal length on the camera just to try and get a little bit more depth into this object the object is relatively thin so if we go for a slightly shorter lens we will get a little bit more depth and we'll start to see some of these areas in here just a little bit more now we need to be careful that we go, don't go too far but we can start to push it back just a little bit so i'm going to select my render camera just over here and i'll just save a current version of this render and we might move from a focal length of about 35 let's go down to somewhere like about 24. that will push us further out i'll need to unlock the camera and push the camera further in so i need to unlock my camera and i'm just going to have a little bit further in so this is what i had previously and this is what i have now so it just looks a little bit more dramatic we get a little bit more depth into these areas just under here and it just makes it feel slightly more dynamic overall so I've taken a look at trying to push the materials a little bit more and push the lighting a little bit more. I'd still need to go back and try and balance up my new lighting towards my backplate now. But I should get a better response across all of the surfaces that are there. So that's a brief look at how I would go about addressing some of that feedback that I gave out in the first video.